And when you're eight years old, you believe that kind of stuff. You believe people will change. But you know what? My dad wasn't gonna change. If he hadn't changed and I was already eight, he wasn't gonna change in one more week. But you know, when, when you're a kid, you believe that, right? You do, you believe that mom's gonna change, dad's gonna change, somebody's gonna change. Somebody has to. But anyway, we left and um, I remember looking at my mom and I was like, I effing hate you. Cause he would have changed if you would have just waited. And at that point, man, nothing my mom did was right. I used to cuss at her, yell at her, hit her, steal money from her purse. I remember one time when I was in Preston and my mom only drove around Lindsay, you know, and so she had to get a ride. And Preston is like, you drive all the way to Sacramento and then it's like another hour that way in Ione. And so she had to get a ride and be there for visiting. And I remember when I was on the phone, I told her, I want Hostess Donuts, the white powder donuts with raspberry filling. That's all I want. And this is the kind of not good person that I was, because I was still mad about that day when she left my dad. Like I said, I wish I would have known this I know it now and I can talk about it, but at the time I didn't know why I acted that way. You know, I didn't. And she went to visit me and she brought me something that I, it wasn't those donuts. And I remember she got a ride, paid people gas money, everything, brought me food to visit me. And she could only visit me like every three months. And when she didn't bring me what I wanted, I remember I just got up and went and sat with my homeboy and his family and ignored her the whole visit. Because that's how broken I was. That's how much I needed to blame somebody for all the crap that had happened to me. And you know what? It was her fault. And she had to learn. She had to feel as bad as I felt. I didn't know that. And you know, I would, I would be the, 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 the first homeboy there telling people, you know, you shouldn't disrespect your mom, you shouldn't do this. But yet when I'd get home and the door closed, I used to bully my mom. You know, if she didn't buy me what I wanted, you know, I'd tell her, well, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get locked up and it's gonna be your fault. I learned all the stuff of being bullied, I became a bully, and then I became a bully with my mom. My brothers, my little brothers. I eventually, by the time I was 10 years old, I got my first tattoo. By the time I was 12, I had four tattoos, and I started getting locked up. My first time I got locked up was for a beer run. And when I was in sixth grade, before I got locked up, you know, there were people that tried to help me. Don't think I just went through all this, like that little league baseball coach, you know, he would try to help me. And you know, don't listen to him, I'm RFF, Daniel, you know what, don't worry about it. And I'd be like, you don't know how I feel, man. You know, but I'd be like, whatever. I had pastors at, at church. I had teachers that would try to help me, but I was just hurt. And do you guys know what hurt people do? Hurt people hurt people. And it just, I look back at all the people I hurt with my words and, and, and my hands, and I realize how hurt I was. And, and, and it's something that you really have to work on. But, so I'm in sixth grade, and I'm in Mr. Hammond's class. I don't know if any of you remember a teacher. I have like different teachers I remember. And I'll share this story with you of Mr. Hammond. And Mr. Hammond, he was this, my sixth grade teacher. And it was like no other class wanted me. So he kind of would put me in his classroom. Again, I'm in sixth grade, have four tattoos. I would just cuss out teachers, throw stuff at kids, jack people for stuff. And they were just like, try to, at Reese's, they just kept me away from everyone. But it, was, it wasn't like it is now. 
you know, now they have different schools, they have non-public schools, you know, they have a lot of different stuff. And so I hadn't gotten locked up yet. So, you know, they didn't even have the hall for me. Then I was still, back then they didn't have like the monitor or probation for people at that stage. You know, there wasn't a lot of the programs that they have now rather than lock you up. So it was either they let you go as far as they could, then lock you up and that was it. You know, there was nothing else. And I was in sixth grade and I used to like music class. I don't know if they still do it in schools, but in sixth grade, they would bring like for an hour, a whole period, they'd bring a card in, like a big card and it had different instruments. And you know, then they would do the thing with the song and they'd hand you the papers with the song and you would sing s different songs. Like, do a deer, a female deer. Nothing. Far, a long, long way to run. No. No, they, okay, they don't do that no more. All right. But it was like, it was like fun. I used to, as bad of a kid as I was, it was like, and bad, I don't mean like I was like bad, but you know, as hurt as I was, let me put it that way. As hurt of a kid as I was and the way I acted out, I love that class. I remember when I'd hear the cart coming, it'd be like, oh, and so they would come and I'd be in the front, do a deer, a female deer in the front. And like the class, you know, I was like a, a mean kid. So then like some of the kids in the class didn't want to do it. And I would turn around a long, long way around. They'd be, uh, <laughs> they would look up and be a deer, a female deer. And then I'd like look at them and like, you guys better, you know what I mean? Like, and then we'd all be singing. So the teacher liked that, I guess, you know, like, all right, we're going to use Daniel and his bullying to get all these other people to participate. But no, anyway, so uh, I, I liked it. Well, this teacher, I didn't notice, but he made an announcement. How many of you around wherever you live at, do they have sixth grade summer camp? sixth grade summer camp every sixth grader goes well they had it back then and it's six in sixth grade you leave home for three four nights and it's camping and you go with all the sixth graders back then it used to cost twenty dollars so twenty dollars in like 1975 I think it was that was a lot of money back then my mom there was like I said eight of us my mom worked in the fields after my father left the contracting went away and she was just a foreman you know working in the fields and twenty dollars for a single mom you know with eight kids is hard back then you know that's when it was barely starting like food stamps general aid they didn't have a lot of that and even though they had it believe this or not our moms our grandmas wouldn't get it. They'd be like, we ain't taking nothing. We can do it on our own. And it's changed. You know, now it's like a whole big giant thing. But back then, our moms wouldn't take the money. So she had to work. So 20 bucks was a lot. It would be like now a single mom with eight kids. And they'd say, okay, give us 100 bucks. You know, she'd be like, no, man, that's a lot of other stuff I can buy for the rest of the kids. So I didn't notice when you made the announcement this week so the next week he told me to stay after class and so i stayed after class which was nothing new because i always stayed after class and he tells me since i brought up the summer um the sixth grade camp trip you didn't participate in music last week and you didn't participate this week and so he was paying attention to me and i was like i don't care i don't want to go to that stupid thing because that's what we do you know, right? When they, it, just imagine sixth grade and someone says, I know, da, 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 and you're like, no, you're stupid. I don't want to go to that place. And he was like, well, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to your mom and the school and we're going to set it up and you can go work at my house and I'll pay for you to go. And I was like, I don't want to go. I don't care. I don't want to go there. And he was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and set it up. And I was like, I don't care. Walked out of the classroom. And I remember when I walked out of the classroom and he couldn't see me and all the kids had already left. I was like running like, yes, all right, I'm going to go to PsyCon because that was the name of it. But I couldn't show that, you know, but I was happy. I wanted to go to PsyCon. Who doesn't? In sixth grade, it was just like, you know, I was thinking I was going to be. Have you guys ever seen Lord of the Flies? 
I thought it was going to be like that. I mean, I was going to make a spear and I was going to be running around and just killing animals. You know, when I was in sixth grade, I was like, yes. So I wanted to go, but I couldn't show him. So this teacher, Mr. Hammond, and you guys see I'm a Mexican. He was a white guy. So, you know, that's hard to imagine, right? And But he worked with me. And he talked to my mom and he talked to the, to the school and he set it up. And after school for five days, we would leave the school. I would ride with him. We'd go to his house and I would do some hoeing, some weeds in his yard. And then afterwards, we would go inside and like we had a two bedroom house and there was like a bunch of heads in there, man. And my little brother's feet stunk. I don't know if you ever had little nephews or little brothers and it's like, God, what the heck, man? But, you know, so I went to his house. He had a nice house. You know, to me, it was nice. He had a fireplace. So I cleaned his yard and, and I went in there, leave your shoes outside. We'd go in and we would drink hot chocolate, him and his wife and me. And then the first day, and he started doing this every night, he'd get his guitar. He would go get a guitar. And I remember I'd be sitting there at this fireplace because it would get dark around five. So that's like winter. Because uh, it gets dark earlier in the winter, huh? Because we'd get out of school at 3.30. I'd work for like an hour. And by the, yeah, it was like five. It was the winter. And we'd go in and we'd start drinking hot chocolate by the fireplace. And I remember looking around and, you know, I didn't feel like MRFF. All the drama, man, from home, it just wasn't there. I remember I'd sit there, and the fire would be going, his wife, and he'd bring the guitar, and he gave me some sheets with music, and we would sing John Denver songs. Nothing again. <laughs> Country roads take me home to the please i be nothing okay all right but <laughs> oh i used to love those songs and, and and if you think about it really if you really just stop and think about it what the heck is the sixth grader with four tacks always in trouble doing at this white teacher's house singing country roads you know what i mean but that was my experience and you know what i went to camp and we there was no hunting and you know what i mean i kept wanting to run and hunt and they didn't let us and but it was fun camping and then we came back and soon after that i ended up getting busted and uh, on that beer run and then between the ages of 12 and 30 i remember the first time i got busted i was sitting in the police station and the officer who arrested me because we did a beer run, right? And this is what we would do. It was weird. The store was dumb. I don't know. You guys probably know stores like this where you can take stuff. And you open the door, and right there were the things where you grab the liquor. And then all the way at the end of the thing, there was like a counter, like from there to, um, what's your name again? Miss Michelle? Yeah. Like that long was the counter, and it was like this high. So it's like he had to either try to jump over the counter, and you know they have all kinds of stuff on there, so he had to run around. So by the time he ran around, we would open the door, run in, and everybody grab something and run out. And then we right next to it was a laundromat, and we would run through the laundromat and hit the alley, and we would say, okay, we're going to meet at the park. So everybody would just split up, and then we'd meet at the park. And so there's this saying, okay, I want you guys to remember this saying. <laughs> Your best thinking got you to where you're sitting right now. Okay? Your best thinking got you to where you're sitting right now. Because my best thinking was just like yours. Because this is what I thought. As I'm running and everybody's running down the alley splitting up, I'm like, the cops are going to go by here. I'll wait. So everybody's running. I stopped and I hid behind a dumpster. And then there goes one cop car. And another cop car. And I'm like... Yes, my best thinking. I'm intelligent. I'm smart. 
what I thought. So I come out with my two bottles and I'm walking and all of a sudden I hear like something crunch and I turn around and there's a cop car right behind me with the lights off going real slow. I was like, oh, so I'm running and again, my best thinking is this is the evidence. I'll break the evidence. I mean, that's what I would do. I always thought I had a better plan. I would just keep going. I didn't know when to just stop.